My name is Anne O'Shea and I'm here with some of our team and we're going to talk about our project which is about assessment for learning and it's about developing resources for first year undergraduate maths modules. So there's a lot of tie in with um, the work that Tom has been talking about and also Lisa's project. Um, Okay, so the partners, as you'll see, are Maynooth University, DIT, um, AKI, AIT, sorry, DKIT, and DCU. And of course, the National Forum has given us the money. Um, most of the people involved are from either from mathematics departments or engineering departments in those universities, and we're working together to try and improve the um, resources available for formative assessment for first-year maths courses. So um, our aim was to develop an audience response system that we could use in classrooms. Um, there are lots of these around and people have already talked about clickers and so on, but unfortunately they don't work so well in maths classrooms. They work to a certain extent, um, but what we really wanted to do was to be able to have students draw a diagram, draw a graph, um, give a little calculation and the lecturer would be able to get that feedback straight away and then be able to respond to it on the spot. So um, Seamus, who's here from the engineering department in Maynooth, had already developed a system like this and most of the, um, the work in this part of the project is going to be to develop that further and especially for use in both Android and iOS systems so that students can, on their smartphone, just um, upload this kind of stuff instantly. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, the other part of the project is to develop tasks and resources to look at conceptual understanding in first year mathematics courses and see how technology can help us with that. So, in order to figure out what we should concentrate on, we um, did, conducted a survey of staff and students to find out what it was that both staff and students wanted, what, what kind of areas they thought their students had difficulty in, and what kind of resources they wanted, and what kind of resources also they actually use, uh, so that we wouldn't be reinventing the wheel. Um, so the audience response system, we don't have um, we don't have the system yet. We uh, actually spent most of the semester hiring a programmer because we wanted to get somebody who would have the skills to do this properly. And we uh, held interviews. We had a very good um, set of applicants. We held interviews and we got our first choice applicant as decided to take the job. So she will start work next Monday actually. And she will spend the summer trying to um, develop this um, response system. And we hope that it'll be ready at least a version of it will be ready in October to start trialling in classrooms next semester. Uh, we also had discussions within the group over the last few months about what we wanted from the system, what changes we wanted from the version that already existed, and we have identified some things that we will include in the next version. Um, <clears throat> the staff and student survey, Katrina has done a lot of the um, analysis on that and she will talk about that in a second but I just wanted to say that uh, we met, the group met a few times over the year. The first meeting we really concentrated on how to design the survey, what we wanted to know. So we, pi we designed the survey, we piloted it, we ended up revising it a little bit after that and then we administered it. So we had um, students in the four institutions where uh, we had about 450 responses and we also had a staff survey which we sent around to people who were, in, who were involved in teaching first year maths modules and we've had 32 responses to that so far. Um, and the analysis, and that's from people all over the country, uh, you'll see in a second when Katrina talks about it in further um, detail. So the data from this project is one of our major outcomes so far. Um, the tasks and resources that we want to work on um, we decided to try and come up with things that were in two camps really. There's a lot, a huge amount of resources available online already, so we didn't want to go and do everything again. So what we want to do is try and package a lot of the things that we really like that's out there and be able to give easy access to people, to both staff and students to that. But also then we wanted to develop new things. Where are there gaps? What can we do about it? So some of these things, you'll see the first one, a web infantry of useful existing resources. A lot of that has come out of the survey from both staff and students saying what they use, what they really like. So we want to compile that 
all in one place. Um, using Khan Academy, Khan Academy came out when students were talking about what they use quite a lot and also with lecturers. So Fiona is going to talk a little bit in a minute about how we're going to um, package those resources in an easy to use way. Um, we also want to design, use some of the features of Moodle to design lessons. Um, these lessons are where you can combine content and tasks in the same thing, rather than having some content and then click somewhere else to do a quiz on it. It's all combined and students can develop um, their knowledge as they go through. Um, and we also want to look at screen screencast projects. Again, um, there had been use, we had thought maybe we'll create our own screencasts, but then we saw some other projects, including some in Dundalk, where the students created their own. And we thought, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll steal that idea. So, um, so we want our students to come up with screencasts to share with the rest of their class. And we think that there's two benefits. We'll have nice screencasts that students have developed themselves, but the students in developing them, we feel that that's the real um, learning is going to take place there. And we also want to develop a suite of interactive tasks based on conceptual understanding, trying to develop conceptual understanding in different areas of mathematics that we have identified from our survey. And um, Sinead is going to talk, are going to show you some of those that we have uh, worked on so far. So I think I've probably said this stuff already, this is the progress. So we, we've got some resources. We're going to make a website, which we haven't, our programmer when she starts is going to be involved in doing that. Um, the lessons in Moodle, we have some prototypes already. Uh, we're not going to show you any of those today. We will focus on the Khan Academy and um, interactive tasks. And I've already said about the screencasts. So I'm going to hand you over to Katrina, who's going to talk about the um, data we've got. And then we'll see some of the other resources we've developed. Thanks, Anne. So, as Anne said, there, are, there were two surveys carried out, one for students and one for lecturers. So, in the student survey, they were essentially asked for three different types of information, their background information. Then there was a set of Likert questions, uh, 23 different question types that were asked to rate their ability to do and understand those questions. And then a set of open responses where they were asked what particular topics they found difficult in the year and what resources they used to overcome those difficulties and then what would their advice be for us in this project in developing resources. So what I've shown here in the graph really is what came out of that survey is the significance of the mathematics leaving cert level that the students had, whether they were higher or ordinary level students. And you can see from that there that the vast majority of the students in DCU and Maynooth had higher level maths taken and in AIT and DKIT their ordinary level and their responses to the questions were you know were dependent on their their level of maths. Um, in the lecturer survey uh, as Anne said we got 32 responses 16 from the IOTIs and 16 from the universities and they were simply asked for open response questions similar to the students based on the concepts and procedures that they considered were most difficult and the resources they would advise us to use. So if we look at the student Likert analysis, uh, when you look at overall for the understand and do, 77% of the students reckon they can do and understand all the question types. So, and there was a significant difference there between what higher level students said and ordinary level students said. Um, the main areas that came out of that were they might actually agree they have difficulties on are in functions and drawing graphs and so on. So um, I also made a note there that they were asked about differentiation. Um, none of them really indicated that they had a problem in differentiation in the Likert analysis. But when you look at the open responses, they're all talking about the problems they have with differentiation. And they included integration, which they weren't asked about. So, so some of the Likert obviously didn't match up with the open responses. Um, now, when you look across the two, uh, evaluate the two surveys together, you see that I just took one example here of, you know, the graphing basic functions because 20% of ordinary level students indicated they had problems with it. 
25% of the students in the open responses indicated they had problems with functions and graphs. And you we also saw that coming up in the lecturer's responses. They um, find the students, but the lecturer responses might give you a bit more detail of what exactly the problem was. For example, there were a number of lecturers who said it was compositions of functions or that students had problems with domain and ranges, whereas the students themselves couldn't really pinpoint exactly what their problem is with the, with the area. Um, I thought as well it's worth you know, saying there overall the students' responses were heavily based towards calculus and stuff like that, whereas the lecturers' responses were ba you know, mostly towards basic algebra, basic arithmetic. arithmetic. But when you delve down into them, you see a lot of, of them saying the same things. And because we asked them the easiest topics and something that kept coming over again is that the student, I put this up here, the students said the things they'd covered in Leaving Cert. That's what they found the easiest when they came to, to second level. Um, when we asked the students and lecturers about their, the resources they found helpful, they were spread across books, handouts, videos, websites. Um, students find handouts useful because they're step-by-step -step examples, and this came up over again, step-by-step -step examples and solutions. Lecturers found them helpful because students seemed to like to look at them in class and helped retain information. Um, and they also liked um, the Khan Academy, Wolfram Alpha, um, and then the lecturers mentioned things like the Math Centre, the Math Tutor and GeoGebra. And as Anne said, we're taking those, all those on board in developing our resources. Um, in the advice on resources as well, the students equally kind of advocated, they like printed resources, websites and videos. They like a printout, even if it's on Moodle and they can print it out themselves. They like something that they can take away and have to look the step by step. Though, and the lecturers, in, from the lecturer's point of view, most of them you know, want online resources. So as again, I said, this is what we're, what we're going to develop here. All right, okay. Thanks. Okay. One of the, the, the resources that we're, we're, we're going to focus on is looking at existing resources and listening to the students' responses to the surveys Khan Academy came up again and again, and we're also aware of the the Mathletes Challenge that is bringing Khan Academy into second level and primary level that's going on um, currently in Ireland. Um, and the but the the problem with a lot of the resources is that students felt that they couldn't name the topics. So going out and trying to find the resource that they actually need is a problem. So our idea here was to take one resource that students highlighted was useful and try and package it. Try and using the topics that they have named as problem topics, um, put together what, what we call a, a CAN playlist so that they could, um, a bit like this, so that they can go to this um, Moodle package, this, this Moodle course, and they can be led through um, resources and directly to resources, videos and quizzes um, that they that they can use. Um, that's the main focus of this element of uh, this element of the project. But as 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 it came up earlier, it's very important that students can see and use these things in context. Um, and that lecturers are able to facilitate student use of these of these resources. So we also want to, through this Moodle page, highlight some of the the functionality inbuilt into Khan Academy, the monitoring facility that's available um, through their coach um, their their coach class setup, the possibility of creating playlists and predefined missions which can guide a class group to particular tasks and allow lecturers see what students are interacting with and what and and to highlight problem topics very early and also their the recommendation structure which allows um which which would be particularly useful in learning support environments where you're trying to tailor um, resources to particular student needs. So that's kind of a, the, the essence of what, what this aspect is about. Um, 
We're also uh, developing some interactive tasks. Um, oh, great. No. <laughs> Sorry, does anybody know how I can show this on the drag the window? Oh, yeah, great, thanks. Um, so we had developed some interactive tasks. This is uh, one using GeoGebra, which is a freely available dynamics um, geometry software. And the focus in this part, uh, well, in, in these tasks is um, on conceptual understanding, developing conceptual understanding and students' mathematical thinking skills. Um, so in this particular task, we're looking at graphs of functions, which is something the students had highlighted as problematic, and the effect of adding a constant to um, a function, to a function value, or to the independent variable. And I suppose this is something that traditionally students would have been shown in class, would have been told, and then they would uh, be required to remember or reproduce it. But here we want the students to explore the effects for themselves and to describe them. Um, so um, here there are a number of different mathematical skills involved for the students to complete the task. Um, they, they need to experiment. So the idea is that if we change the value of A here, you'll see that actually we have a graph of two different functions. So if I change it to, to 1, and we want to see how the graph um, changes as the value changes. So it's 1.1. So the graph, the red graph, which is x squared plus A as opposed to x squared, it's moved 1.1 units vertically. If we change the value of A again, so if I change it to five, for instance, it moves five units vertically. So we want the students to be able to uh, recognize this and articulate it. And there, there are different things they can do with this apple, but that's, that's basically uh, the idea. So um, I won't bother putting up our last slides, but it was really to talk about the national impact and the top three things that uh, we hope come out of this. And what we really want is that we create a bank of resources that are tailored to the kind of courses that we teach in first years in universities and IOTs in Ireland, and that these would be readily available to lecturers and students to use, that the research coming from the project is going to be available not just to people in Ireland but disseminated around the world. We're going to a conference in September in the UK to talk about the data coming from our surveys and we hope that that will continue with the evaluation. We want to evaluate everything we do. It all should be research based so we know what works, what doesn't. And um, that the app, the apps, the lecturer and student apps for the um, audience response system, we hope they'll be useful in lots of areas, not just mathematics, but we could see them being used in lots of STEM subjects in, in particular, and that they would be readily available to everyone in the country. So that's it really. Good. Thank you very much.